and welcome to another edition of Tea Time Chat. We're going to do another gear review demo today. And but first, this is some very special tea. Uh, this is stress relief tea from Yogi. Um, it's a very sort of Indian spiritual mystical thing, I suppose. Um, not particularly stressed out right now, but again, it's in the morning. And I didn't want to do anything with caffeine just now, so. So it has a very pungent aroma, no sugar. Um, very good. So today, we are going to talk about, this is my favorite axe. This is the Jackson. This is the Jackson Performer Series PS3. So obviously this is a sort of a Randy Rhodes V shape. This is my favorite guitar. Um, I have the receipt. This is the first guitar that I purchased that I kept the receipt. So this is, I bought this in July, on July 19th in 1996. So this bad boy is at least 20 years old. I don't know. Uh, this is from Dirt Cheap Music in Marietta. I don't even know if they're still there. Um, so this bad boy is at least 20 years old. Um, I don't know how how long it was uh, hanging around the music shop before I got it, but um, yeah, probably probably a couple years since this is very much of a kind of a hair metal guitar, and by that time, um, you know, the early 90s, as you know, was a big grunge thing, and metal was not not so big as it was. So let's take a look at this, and then we're going to cut over to some pre-recorded sounds, and I will do, uh, I will do each pickup on clean, and then low gain, and then high gain. So let's have a look. So, um, so this is obviously not the higher end Jackson. Um, you know, the more expensive ones have the shark fin inlays, right? Um, so this was, I, I paid like a little over $350 for this in 1996. So we see that, um, again, you've got your non-locking tuners. This is awkward. The tuners are Brandon Jackson. The neck has a scarf joint. It's a maple neck. Nice, no finish. Uh, Rosewood fingerboard, of course. Um, it's a fixed bridge. This is actually not the original bridge. This is an aftermarket bridge. Let's see if you can see it. Um, it's got these very sloping saddle pieces that are um, have a little more adjustment in them than this stock bridge. Uh, it was meant for a Les Paul, so I had to mill the bridge down to get it to fit. Um, you see this this stop tail piece there. It's a string through. You see the finish. It's a it's a dark blue. It's kind of a sparkly dark blue. Um, three way selector, uh, two volume, one tone. It's got your strap button. There's your jack out there. This is not the best place for the jack because that makes it very hard to play sitting down. Um, so these are the stock pickups. I really love these pickups, by the way. You can see there's the action up near the top of the fretboard, top of the neck. Pretty decent. Um, so I want to just say I'm not like a huge fan of Randy Rhodes. I like Randy just as much as like anyone else, I guess. But um, I've wanted one of these since I started playing guitar. You see a lot of them, like when you see them in pawn shops, the fin up here is usually damaged. This point's usually broken off. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so this one I've been able to keep in good shape. This is my favorite guitar. This is the main guitar I used when I had my band. 
back in uh, high school all the way through college. It's got a really good feel to the neck. Let's see the action a little closer to the nut. Um, it's got a real good feel. It's real fast. It's very comfortable. Um, not so much the the neck joint though. Look at that. It's it's bulky. Um, and if you play much up past the twelfth fret, it kind of gets in the way. I mean, it's okay. You can because of the body shape, you can get up here. It's not it's not the best thing ever though. Um, the neck plate is stamped Jackson, and the serial number. Um, of course, we've got position markers on the side of the neck. Very important. Um, of course, I'm not plugged in right now, but um, we'll plug in in a second. Um, so what else is there to say about this? Um, the nut has been replaced. The original nut was black. Um, it was cut a little bit too high. Um, the action when I got it was kind of, you know, needed to be worked on. Um, the screws that mount the pickup rings are all rusty. Um, but check out the pole pieces. Those are fairly large pole pieces. Things are fairly high output pickups. Um, but, um, of course some of the, the screws back here are all rusty. Um, I want to show you the original stock bridge. Um, so you can see, I mean, it was more of like a Gibson style, uh, bridge. But, uh, hang on one second, I'll go get that. Alright, so another thing I want to mention is the case. Um, cases for these guitars are a little bit hard to find. I remember I, I had the guitar for a while before I got a case for it, and the case is big. It's almost as big as the case for my bass guitar. Um, so this is the stock bridge, and so this side over here is the low E side. Look at the wear. I mean, it's a very cheap metal, so this is the high E over here. And and the wear on these three saddles is just from my hand sitting there from palm muting. And you can see in the low E saddle the metal is actually worn away. That's not just the finish, the metal was worn away from just my hand being there. Um, so, and being a typical Gibson style bridge, it doesn't have a lot of room to intonate. And that's one of the problems I had with the guitar, is it was, it was difficult to intonate. Um, so I went to this style bridge, which is a lot easier on the strings, it's not as sharp, the saddles have a lot more mass, and this one had a lot more uh, room to intonate, and I really like this. I forget where I got it, but it was um, one of those cheap parts websites. Another thing I want to mention is the infamous so-called meat pocket. This is um, this is a bag full of lead uh, fishing weights. Oh, and I always have a, on all my straps I have my pick right there. Um, the problem with this is at least it's either I guess maybe it's not neck heavy, but where the strap buttons are, it really wants to neck dive. And I can't stand that. So the the infamous so-called meat pocket here brings balance to the guitar. And it'll stay where I put it. Which is very nice. So, um... I guess that's all, about all there is to say about the guitar itself. Um... So uh, we're going to go ahead and cut over to the pre-recorded uh, demo, and I will see you soon.
Thank <laughs> you. 